you guys have questions, go out to uh, Vocalist Studio and click the little pop out question thingy and I'll answer for you. I'm just setting up my laptop here. See, Drake, how you been, man? Have you talked to Stefan lately? Okay. Oh, I see. Draven's answering a uh, question uh, with a Rhea Keen out of UK. In regards to the, um, there's a, somebody asked a question at the TBS uh, Facebook group about if there's an age, well, shit, I guess I can just read it. The question is from from Gina, and the question from Gina is, question, first question of the morning from Gina at the Facebook group. Is it true that an individual reaches their vocal prime in their late 30s to mid 40s? Um, now, I preface this by saying I'm no research scientist. Uh, you know, I haven't seen data on that per se. I can only go off of life experience and what I've noticed as a voice coach. Um, but my answer to Gina was, I believe so. Um, as you get, in, as, you, as you go into your 30s and your 40s, I think, for most people, the um, your your motor skills and your strength and ability to seeing better increases. So that's the good news this morning. Um, that's really been the case for me. I mean, I I am seeing so much better now than I did in my twenties and in my thirties, uh, just night and day. And other people in the post will tell you that as well. Um, that that was their experience. It's probably not absolute for everybody. Um, I, I would say it's probably the case for people that are on their voice and training and practicing and staying in good health and all that. Then it's probably the deal. It's a little more light in here. All right. Um, also, Maestro David Kyle, who was my coach for years. I worked with uh, Jeff Tate from Queens, Reich, Lane Staley from Allison Chains, Chris Cornell, Ann Wilson from Hart, Ronnie Monroe from Metal Church, and myself, other famous singers and just medium level people um, in fame, I guess. <laughs> That's what I, what I want to say. Kind of awkward. I'm just saying, great voice coach, worked with a lot of great people. Um, but and my point is, is Maestro Kyle. Uh, I remember him saying this. This would be like 30, 35 years ago. But he, he said, um, remember he was saying to me, I was a young man, he was at the piano, and he said, said that the voice is the last organ or the last anatomy element to fully mature in the body. Now, that was his claim. I don't know if that's scientifically accurate or not. It's probably not perfectly accurate, but, but what Maestro David Kyle was saying is what we're saying to you today. It's from his years of observing thousands of teachers, he noticed that too. So there is something to it. Something happens in your 30s and your 40s that enables you to get stronger and sing better. Um, I'd like to know more about that, but um, the simple answer is yeah. So as you get older, stay in shape, keep training, stay and do your warm ups and do your workouts, and I think you can expect to be singing better. 
All right. Thank you, Gina. So yesterday I got a question from Travis. Travis says, Travis says, hey, Robert, I have a real thirst to express myself through my voice and have been singing for a long time to varying effect. I've always loved your work. Thank you, Travis, your energy, and recently bought your training course. All right, good. And he loves it. I'm working through it, and I'm just unsure. Here comes the question. I'm unsure how to really get the most out of it. I have a broad question, isn't it? Um, do I just train the onsets every day? Or, um, you know, it is quite clearly set out. Maybe I need to go back and start over. So, so this is a question that I get from my students from time to time. Um, he just needs general direction on where to go. My answer was, one, watch all the lectures in the course. So go out to my course and watch the lectures. That's the lavalier talking and, and teaching and go to school and get smart. Make sure that you continue to educate yourself on the method and on the techniques. Um, it's not just because we're, we want to be academic geeks. That's not, that's not why. Um, if the mind understands what is going on and the under, uh, mind understands why, at least at a basic level, when the mind understands why we're doing something and how something is happening, like a warm-up routine or vocal cry mode configuration or singing distortion, when, when you learn a little bit about the details and the science behind these things, what that does is that allows the mind to engage its auditory imagery. Okay, it allows the mind to make pictures, um, to use its imagination and, and use the power and the leverage of auditory imagery. Um, and a lot of singers will a lot of singers will, will, will tell you after they've been training for a while, they, they, they see pictures in their, in their mind. They see colors. They see certain, certain you know, mechanics or you know, it could just be abstractions. It could be just about anything. But the mind fabricates a picture that, that then helps the motor skills give it what it's asking for. So, in other words, intellectually, if you don't, if you're totally blinded intellectually and you don't understand why and how a vocal technique works, then the mind is blinded. It's a handicap. It can't give you imagery to help the motor skills to deliver what it's asking for. All right? So, That's why it's important to watch the lectures, because the lectures explain not just what you got to go do, but why we're doing this, and you know, a little bit of a little bit of science, a little bit of technique, a little bit of methodology behind it, and that frees the mind to say, "Oh, okay, I think I get it. I get it. I'm gonna visualize this," and then what happens is then the body begins to respond better. You get better results when you intellectually understand really at just a, even a basic level of why and how we're doing these things. So I went off on a, on a tangent there a little bit, but my advice to Travis was keep going through the lectures. Now the course has something like 180 lectures, so you wouldn't do that in a night, but um, I would recommend like two or three lectures a day, but then always go train. So you got a little bit of book work, you're gonna watch some videos, have some fun, then put one of these in your hand and go train and work out, okay? Which is what's coming. 
So Travis, watch all the lectures and work through them. Um, and then you should go out to the training page. So on our full course at the Vocal Studio, there's a training page. So there's two user interfaces. One for watching the lecture content, go to school, get smart. And then there's another page that is light on lecture and heavy on training content. The My Training page is where you find the, the streaming MP3 files for um, men and women, slow and fast. Um, and you find the demonstration videos of me doing all the workouts. So when you're ready to put one of these in your hand and begin to train and work out, you go to the My Training page uh, on our course system here. So I'm telling Travis, watch lectures, then always go out to the My Training page. And out of the My Training page, I want him to go through phase one, which is his first onset, the track and release onset. All right, I want to be able to make a good note with a proper embouchure, proper pitch, proper valve, proper larynx position. I want him to get a good onset package and work on each individual note, okay? And in phase one, at the my training page, is all of the work, all the warm-ups, all right? So I go on to, advise that he do the warm the warm-ups. Now phase two on the my training page has all the other onsets. Okay, there's eight onsets. I don't feel like you have to dive in and do every onset or master every onset in the first two weeks. That's not necessary. There's actually five onsets that you use frequently on a day-to-day -day basis. And then there's three others that are sort of specialty items that you don't use as often, okay? Um, so in phase two, to get more familiar with the other onsets, the five onsets that we use most often in, in the training program are track and release, dampen, which is, by the way, uh, onsets off of nasals, dampen and release, which is onsets off of plosives, um, attack and release, which is onsets going into straight vowels. Wind and release, which is an asperit, um, asperit onset or an onset that, that starts with wind or basically an H. And pulse and release. And pulse and release is the vocal fry or vocal cry onset. It's the onset that is that, that is more than others helping us get into this important cry mode that you've heard uh, me uh, talking a lot about. Okay, so that's good. That's good information for you guys this morning if you're on the course and you're thinking about, well, what onsets do? There's eight onsets. Where do I go? You know, which one do I do first? Track and release, dampen and release, attack and release, wind and release, and pulse and release, all right? So I'm telling Travis, watch your lectures, do your warm-ups, and then slowly work through these other onsets. And I'm advising that you start with those five because they're the ones you use every day. They're the ones, they're, they're the onsets that you see in every lyric, okay? Um, and then phase three at the My Training page, phase three, is the integrated training routines, okay? So in the TBS methodology, we have developed what we call integrated training routines. And an integrated training routine is simply a routine that has been customized and put together um, by TBS teachers and students that address your unique vocal needs. I'll repeat, at some point in the training program, in the course, the TBS course, and it's demonstrated in phase three of the My Training page, at some point, TBS teachers and students, we don't just do vocal workouts. We don't just go, okay, we're gonna just do Ga ga ga, or a siren, or a workout, and we're just gonna do uh, ah and start. We don't just start and make sound. That's not what we're doing. Okay. Um, 
as a TVS teacher and student, you understand the anatomy of a vocal workout. And that's maybe you know, one of the cool things that we've developed here in the program, in the book, is I've, I've looked at, at sort of the, the elements or what you might say the anatomy of a vocal workout. And there's three elements that we get smart about in here. One, the onsets, how you start the note. We just got done talking about that. There's an entire phase two and a whole lecture module on the onsets. They're that important. Two, take a good guess. Vowels, right? You got to have vowels. You're singing vowels. Are we training on an A? Are we training on an A? Are we training on an E? What's the vowel? And what's the difference between training on an A versus training on an A? Well, TVS teachers and students know the answer to that. Okay? So we're not just picking any sound or any vowel. You're picking a vowel for a very specific reason because you understand what the features, advantages, and benefits are to that vowel. The third element in an integrated training routine is a little bit more practical. It's the, the workouts, the vocalese, the, the siren, the, the blues workout, uh, your teacher at a piano. It's, it's actually the vocalese, the streaming MP, MP3 file, the facilities. So integrated training routines are, are vocal workouts, but they're vocal workouts with intelligence. They're vocal workouts with know-how and understanding. We understand how we're starting and why, and we understand why we're working a particular vowel, and we have to have facilities. We have to have training content and files and, and vocalese, okay? Phase three, out at the My Training page, is a set of integrated training routines. There's 13 integrated training routines in phase three of the My Training page, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that there's only 13. Actually, the combinations are quite large. It gets up to about 600 and something, all right? And I'm not gonna demonstrate and do 600 of these things. But the 13 integrated training routines onsets and sirens that are out at the my training page are um are just routines that i've put together over the years working this program it's sort of what i've fallen into what i've developed teaching this method every day in the studio for the last five to six years and they get results you see i notice well here comes joe uh, and you know we're going to do the same routine we did last week with Joe because it's getting results. We want damp and release onsets and glottal attacks at the top because we're helping Joe learn how to belt in the head voice. Okay, so there's a routine, there's a formula for that, and Joe trains that. And then Sarah comes in after Joe. She doesn't want to belt or need to belt in the head voice. She needs to get vocal full compression. So her integrated training routine has a quack and release onset and a track and release onset. All right, which are onsets that help design, um, help get vocal full compression, all right? So Joe and Sarah both have unique integrated training routines that meet their needs. I think I made my point, that's what's going on. So I'm telling Travis to go out to, after he's done his warm-ups and he's working through the onsets to then begin to put the onsets onto sirens and begin training, okay? begin working the motor skills. And then what are you training? Well, the onsets, the vowels, and you're, you're taking sirens through the vocal break into the head voice, all right? You think, I mean, I mean if, you're, if, you're in a, if you're in a voice lesson, okay, um, you, you should be training through the vocal break. If you're not training through your passaggio, through the vocal break in your voice lesson or, in, in, or the training content you're using isn't encouraging you to do that, then you've got a problem. That's a red flag, all right? So phase three at the My Training page, integrated training routines, it's there to build all the skills and all the motor skills and, and, uh, and kinesthetics of, of, of singing and training and getting strong. But in particular, you always want to work through the vocal break, okay? That's my advice to Travis. Okay, we've got somebody else here. Viraj, Viraj. 
Baraj says, I have noticed in many of your onset demonstrations in your videos, near the end of the onset demonstration, you project your voice in and out. I think he's sort of referring to a crescendo. I get sort of quiet and then get loud. Um, kind of like going quiet for just a moment and then going back to full volume, which makes this ripple, all right? I think he's referring to distortion, sounding effect. Is that distortion? So Viraj says, hey, I, I noticed that in your onset demonstrations at the top of the note, it tends to crescendo. It tends to sort of be quiet and then it gets loud and as you get louder, it begins to ripple or distort. You know, what's going on there? Well, I think what's going on there is, is as, I get, as I did the demonstrations and I'm getting higher, I am purposely adding volume and energy to the onset for um, mostly to inspire you guys. It's mostly just sort of showing off a little bit and it's to inspire my students. I want you to hear the command and control of the dynamics. And as you increase respiration and, um, and, and uh, you know, your physical motor skills at certain levels of energy, it eventually turns into distortion. So, so in some of the onsets at the top, I start quiet, I get a little bit louder, and I push beyond the clean position and produce distortion. Why? Because it's cool. It's cool and it's entertaining and I try to inspire my students to, to take their training skills as far as I can go, All right? All right, uh, woo, interesting name, Zaidshaik, strange foreign name here, um, hey, Robert, with two T's, do check this video out, how can I be able to sing clear and sing with power like him? And another one I want to see is this one. So, hey, Robert, go out to these YouTube links and, and watch these singers and, and sort of do like a voice coach reaction uh, feedback thing, I guess is what he's asking for. How do I get that power and run in my voice? All right, I don't have time to go look at both of these videos and then do a voice teacher reaction thing. That's fine, but it would take more time and I want to, to let other people ask some questions. Um, what I will do is I will copy and paste those links into the Facebook chat so you guys can go look at it and maybe we can talk about it as a, as a group. So here it comes. Uh-oh, wait a minute. All right, there I am, I see myself, weird. Okay, here it is. Here are the two YouTube videos that this guy wanted me to go out and take a look at. Why don't we all go look at it? And if you guys have some feedback, um, that'd be great. Maybe Draymond can kick in. I'm sure he's, he's good at this stuff. So there you guys go. All right. Good morning, Miranda. When are you coming back into the studio? I mean, Miranda, ever since I missed out on the Star Wars cupcakes, um, it's like something came between us. Break my heart, girly, break my heart. Get in here, need a train. All right. All right, so Mark, God, man, it's been forever, forever. Mark Young, we worked together. You came in, we trained. seven, eight years ago. Uh, I've been sort of watching what you've been doing on Facebook and, the, and stuff. I mean, great, You're just a great singer. It'd be a lot of fun to have you come back in. Um, and I'd love to show you some of the new things that we're doing in here. 
Um, anyways, uh, I'm reading a question here. Mark, when I transition to falsetto or head voice, falsetto or head voice, and hold for a measure or two, how can I transition back to a low tenor note? Must I do a multiple note run or should I scoop the notes? Mark, that's a cool question. So Mark's question is, by the way, Mark Young is an uh, experienced singer here in Seattle. Um, you know, very capable guy. So Mark's question is, hey, when I go to head voice, first of all, Mark, look, let me remind you, it's head voice, right? It's not falsetto. Falsetto is ha, 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 windy and has that sort of girlish uh, uh, sound color in the head voice. I don't believe you're talking about falsetto, right? You're talking about full connectivity in the head voice. Okay, so twain, compression in the head voice. So Mark asks, hey, when I go to head voice, all right, fully connected head voice, and I need to go back down, most likely back down through the passaggio, through the break, right? Because that's where it gets, whoa, it gets sort of clunky, right? Um, in the interest of keeping it connected back through the vocal break, should I, I don't know why. Mark, post your question again, please. I just want to get it right. That's all. Maybe if I look out on this other system here. Yeah. Hey, Torsten, cool, man. Welcome. Your book's in the mail. My new student from Norway, Torsten. Dave, love to answer some questions for you and get a chance to give you some quality time. You're just an awesome artist and client. I want to, I want to take care of you. Mark. Mark says, hey, when I go to the head voice, fully connected, and I go back down through the passaggio, um, he probably doesn't want instability issues, he doesn't want the vocal folds to break open on the way back down. That happens to all of us. It's a difficult maneuver. You know, should I um, go in, should, should, should I go down scales with intervals, or should I go with uh, one smooth movement? I can't. I can't see your question, Mark, so I don't, I don't remember exactly the details. But I, but I think I know what the answer is. Mark, one of the things I want to work on with you if you're to come in for another hour is I want to help you get into cry vocal boat. Okay? Um, when, we, when, we, when, we, when we cry, the larynx goes into a special position that is designed to facilitate super high notes at super high frequencies, okay? Because crying is a, a natural response that we use for emergencies. Some babies do it. When we have emergencies, we might scream or cry out loud. So it's a way for the body. It's, it's sort of, it's our version of the, of the alert, um, the home alert uh, 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 siren. You can use like home alert sirens as a metaphor. Crying is sort of that way. The, uh, we're trying to survive. Something is going on and we need help now, okay? So we've got to make a lot of noise. We've got to make a lot of volume. And that works great if it's a high frequency and a lot of volume. So the body, naturally, we've evolved with the ability to put the larynx into a position that allows us to do that. Um, now, it's very natural to do that when we're, when we're babies or when we're emotionally sad to get into cry mode like you don't even give it a second thought but what happens is as we get older and we become adults we sort of we stop crying so we so we're out of practice in creating that position all right and um cutting to the chase this special larynx position called cry vocal mode is 
really great for two things. One, it's really great for crying, last time I checked. And two, it's really great for singing. Singing. Great singing. Doesn't matter who you are. Pavarotti, Barbara Streisand, Sam Smith, Bruce Dickinson, Michael Jackson, Kermit the Frog. I don't care who you're talking about. Great singing, other than the vowels and a few other details, is not much more than command and control, arbitrary command and control of the cry reflex. That is to say, if you want to start getting amazing results, Mark, all of you guys, Mark, if you want to immediately start singing about twice as good, guaranteed what I'm telling you right now. Get in touch with cry vocal mode. Learn how to sing through cry vocal mode, the larynx physical position of cry mode. All right? Now, when you first start doing it, it's a little bit weird. It's not that you can't get into it. Most people can because it's very much a, a natural thing that we've all been able to do. The challenge with cry vocal mode is sort of like the embouchure, is just learning how to hold that position. Sure, we've all cried before, and, 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 and when we're emotionally, when we're sad emotionally, then it turns on and it's there for us, but it only just, it only configures in little spurts when we're crying, emotionally sad. The thing that's new is to get into that position and hold it, and then sing through that until you have to take a breath. That's the new thing. So it's, it's, so it's the same position, you know how to get into it, but getting into it and holding it right, is sort of the new thing. And it doesn't take long. It, it, it might take a couple hours, it might take a couple days, it's not long, but it's a little weird, but you get a feel for it. But here's the thing that happens. The benefits of vocal cry mode, all right? Number one, it gives you hyper reduction on the vocal folds. That means the vocal folds are now hyper adducted they're closed you get more stability out of your vocal folds mark hope i haven't lost you i'm answering your question here okay because if you want stability coming back down to the passaggio and going back up if you want stability and you kind of want to remove that clunkiness this is the first thing that i'd have you do if you came into my studio this friday if you come in we'll set you up we'll get you into some music and i'll and i'll help you get into cry vocal mode and we'll sing the part We'll sing the part that you're having a challenge with, but you're going to do it in a new way, Mark. You're going to do it with a little bit more consciousness of feeling cry mode, and you're going to do it through that configuration. And I guarantee you it'll be smooth and we'll make it work. Cry mode, three benefits. One, high production of the vocal folds. Last time I checked, keeping the vocal folds deducted is really helpful for singing. Okay, two, those vocal folds that are hyperducted, they're also getting medial compression. Now what that means is, not only are we getting good measurement of compression, but we're also getting an equal amount of pressure, an equal amount of energy along the surface area of the vocal folds, okay? so. If you don't have medial compression, which happens a lot, which is one of the reasons why vocal folds will break and we have problems, then, then oftentimes that compression is on the edges of your vocal folds, or it's, you know, it's just not efficient, it's on the edges, something's not quite right, it's not flush. Vocal cry mode gives you strong compression and it also makes that compression evenly distributed through the surface area of the vocal folds. That's great. That's fantastic. That gives you more stability and it's absolutely critical to sounding chesty in your head voice. One of the things you need to sound chesty in the head voice 
is good medial compression. The more fat, the more meat you have touching on your vocal folds, as you go high, okay, the more chesty the sound color. And three, if that wasn't good enough, it even gets, but wait, it gets even better. Three, vocal cry mode removes pharyngeal constriction. Vocal cry mode removes pharyngeal constriction. What that means is, you know, it's not, it's not gonna guarantee this, but that means like about 90% of your pushing, your choking and the squeezing through the vocal break and back down, Mark, goes away. So Mark, my advice to you is get on board with the kinesthetics and the motor skills of feeling being aware of it and feeling vocal cry mode get really super good at it through your vocal break in your head voice and any maneuver that you're doing i'm willing to bet that if we were to just get a little bit more hyper reduction more medial compression and remove the pharyngeal constriction through vocal cry mode we'd fix your problem guaranteed get in here on friday i'll prove it to you if mark come in here on friday and i'll prove it to you and if, and if it doesn't work, if you don't stop and go, holy mackerel, that feels so much better, it's working now, I'll give you your money back. All right, what else we got here? Okay, thank you, thank you. Multiple note, run, or scoop. Okay, thank you. So regardless of whether you're on a side line or you're doing a multiple note or you're scooping, you're gonna need this cry mode, okay? That would be the thing the first thing that would fix like almost all your problems. Okay, now, scoop the note. Mark, don't scoop notes. Um, we all do this, all singers do this. We, 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 kinda, we kinda onset into the note, we onset into the note low and scoop up. Ah, yeah, ah, we hit low and scoop, we all do this. It's singers do this. Don't know exactly why. Very rarely do we kind of hit low and, 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 and scoop down. We hit or hit high and scoop down. We hit low and scoop up. Um, it's a common problem, really. Uh, a couple times here and there. Cool. It's a bluesy embellishment. On every single note, every single onset, it's no longer a bluesy embellishment. It's a pitch problem. Okay. So don't scoop. Scooping um, very quickly becomes a problem. Right? Get in clean, in clean, right into your note, all right? By the way, one of the best things you can do to get in clean to the note and stop scooping is configure cry vocal mode. Don't scoop, Mark. You've been singing for too long, you're too good to be scooping. You're not a poop scooper, all right? You're too, you're, you're, you're too experienced as a singer to be a poop scooper. Who else is in here? Dave Isomoto, wow, is awesome. Dave, thanks for coming, man. It's really great to have you in here and share some quality time. There's Troy. Uh, Troy. Oh. Troy, any chance to get lesson days other than Fridays, bud? You know, book something for us other than non Seattle Gen X. <laughs> oh, shit. Troy's like, is there any other day other than Fridays that you'll teach? Can you can you can you do us us uh, you know non Gen X guys a favor? <laughs> um. So uh, it's sort of a personal thing. I spent years and years teaching during the week. And on Saturdays, I mean, I didn't have a Saturday off for like eight years, man. And um, so a little over a year ago, I just brought it down to Fridays only. I do a long 10-hour day on Fridays. Um, that's not absolute. It's not um, you know, a religious commitment or anything. I, I will teach on the weekdays, but um, it's typically for teacher training. 
people that are flying in and we're trying to knock out 40 hours for teacher training, then I'll do it. Um, I apologize, Troy. I'm not, I'm, I just, I'm just don't, I don't have the energy to teach more than one 10 hour day these days. Um, we could consider it, but the fee would be more. Uh, that's just the way it is. I, I gave a lot of blood and a lot of heart and soul on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays for eight days, eight, eight years, and I'm just tired. I don't want to do it. I want to do other things. I need to make courses. I got to do other things. So let me, let me put it this way. I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. Troy, you guys, if you want to get the if you want to get the most, the best out of me, if you want me on fire, okay, on point, and just boom, 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 next, boom, 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 and be helping you out, and you don't want me tired, uh, um, I'm I can only do it one day. I've only got the energy and the output to keep the quality standards high uh, for one day. At the moment, uh, Troy, send me an email after this, and maybe we can work something out. Uh, okay, what else we got? Let's see. We got seven minutes left. Um, this has been fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, I think it's been informative. Hopefully, you felt the same way. By the way, I'll be here. Every Thursday morning, Pacific Standard Time at 10 a.m., Facebook, live, answer questions, especially for people that have the course, the light course over at Udemy or the full course at my website. And um, thank you for coming and allowing me to help you. Any more questions, you guys? Okay. Well, there's Mark. Mark, nice Jeep, dude. Wow. Love that Jeep. Um, I'll hang out here for five more minutes um, and wait for any more questions. Otherwise, uh, you guys can all contact me on the contact form at the website, send an email, give me a call, whatever. I'm available. I want to help you out, especially if you're part of the program. Sending an email to a guy um, that I'm interested in buying a, um, a Sontronics microphone. Um, I collect microphones. I, I like getting the sort of the rare, obscure, small companies that are making mics that are going up against the big guys. I like getting those mics. And there's a, there's a small company out of the UK called uh, Sonotronics. And uh, yeah, it's called Sonotronics, and the mic is the the STC80. The STC80. It's not. I don't think it's like you know flamboyantly special. It's just a a handheld dynamic mic, but it's rare. Um, you don't see them very often, and I want to get one before the company goes out of business. Um, so this guy's got one for sale up here in um, Edmonds. And uh, so I'm doing an email to figure out how we can make arrangements for that. It's hard to get that mic. I, uh, they have a website, and then you, and it's one of those deals where you have a website, and like, all right, I'm excited. I'm, I'm ready to buy. I want, you know, I want this mic. Uh, uh, where do I buy it? <laughs> Some of these mic companies, man, they need website development. I'm telling you. I mean, yes. Uh, so, um, by the way, uh, I guess since we're talking about microphones, this has been the mic that I've recently been playing with a lot lately. Uh, it's one of these rare to find mics that I, and the really nice guys, I'm in communication with them right now. Um, so I 
can recommend it. This is the this is the JZ HH1. The JZ HH1. Okay. And it is handmade in Latvia. Um, in one of the Balkan states in Latvia. So these guys up in Latvia make these, it's a little, you know, little, little microphone company in Latvia that makes microphones and they're great. They're great. They got this handheld dynamic mic, sounds killer. And they make, um, they make a U67 and a U47 clone. Um, they are, they're, they're clones to the Neumanns. Um, I have the 47, I'm trying to get the 67. They sound great. Um, I like this handheld mic. One thing I like about it is um, I don't think it was really their intent when they designed it, but it has just a pinch, just a hint of windy white noise in it. Hey! It's got a little bit of just a touch. And my man, I, I, I don't think that was their intent. But it actually makes it really cool. It makes it really good because you get just a little teeny bit of white noise. It's almost, you know, undiscernible. Like you can't quite like like it's almost you. It's almost inaudible, but it's just enough. <laughs> just a touch of white noise in it. That what it does is it adds sort of a little bit of distortion or harmonic distortion into your singing. So it's a really great rock and roll mic. <laughs> now, when I say distortion, I don't mean you know audible ah, kind of eh, kind of distortion, but uh, it's like if you're in a studio and you turn on the harmonic. Um, uh, God damn, what do you call it? Where's Draven when you need him? Um, harmonic, uh, harmonic distortion, uh, harmonic, uh, um, uh, harmon uh, it's a box, technology in studios, they add, yeah, harmonic distortion, and it adds little tiny, tiny partial overtones to the overall sound, and it gives it a little bit of white noise, and uh, makes it sound just a little bit more colorful, a little bit, a little bit more distortion, a little bit, a little bit cloudy, a little bit of cloudy, like it, like you don't want it too clean, it's just a little, Go to jzmike.com, the jzhh1. Good price. I think it's 100 bucks, 120 bucks. Super cool. Check it out. Good guys. Um, that's it. I have to go do a meeting with my partner at voicelessons.com. And um, I love you guys. Thank you for coming. And um, I'll see you next Thursday. In the meantime, send me questions if you, if you have any. And I'm here to help you. Good day.